audience here tonight, thank you. We're ready to get started. Welcome to the Madison City Council meeting. Today is Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. We are streaming this meeting live on City Madison's YouTube channel. We're also recording it. Uh, we have a, a lot of substance in our agenda tonight. So Mr. Barger's class, I want to welcome you. And uh, you, as I said earlier, you picked a great night to see your local government in action. And uh, again, if you, if you have any questions at the end of the, at the, end of the meeting, you're welcome to uh, address council and the mayor's office. We always start our meetings out by uh, standing and removing our caps and bowing our heads and reciting the Lord's Prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the two States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, if you had an opportunity to review the minutes from April 19th, if so, we will entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I move to approve the minutes from April 19th as presented. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. All right, uh, before we get into the rest of the agenda, I think uh, our council, Joe Jenner, would like to uh, make a request of, if, of council. If possible, I need to be somewhere relatively soon. So if, unless there's an objection with the council, I'd like to move the bills on the second reading up to the beginning of the meeting so that way um, I can be here for any public comments and questions. And then uh, I'll first the ballot because the rest of it should be pretty self-explanatory. So it's not object, I'd like to go ahead and do that. That's okay. Do I feel with the importance of that ordinance, I would hate to see it move to the top because we may have people that want to attend and may not have made it yet. Okay. All right, well, we'll go ahead and go. So let's go on to um, the presentation of the petition to vacate the right of way followed by John Bruns. Uh, this is a uh, this is a public hearing and so uh, we will adjourn the regular council meeting and move into the public hearing. We do have a sign-in sheet for everybody in attendance and then we'll move into the public hearing with regards to the presentation of the petition to vacate the right-of-way by John Brown. So I'll start by signing this. Yes. Okay. So the public hearing is open. John, if you guys come and explain what your request is. Yes. So um, I purchased a home at the corner of Pearl Street and West First. And there's a museum of the East, which I would like uh, to partially vacate uh, 12 feet to the east side of that home. I think you have the application in front of you. Council, just for your information, this has been for the Board of Public Works. They reviewed this. Um, Mr. Jackson has looked over everything with regard to utilities, and the Board of Works approved this and uh, passed it on to you guys. And so now it's here um, for, uh, for your consideration. So, is there anybody from the public that has any objections or questions with regard to this um, request? Thank 
council. Um, vacation at 12 feet from, would that be the eastern side of your building? What is the left um, between the street and approximately eight feet? And all the utilities run east and west on First Street in the back alley. Patrick, are you asking how much of the street is left? Or how no, much but how, how much of the, the grassy area is currently there between the mm -hmm. street and the house? Yeah, in the street. Right. He's vacating eight to uh, 60 feet, 50, 50 feet. It's a 59 foot right away. 59, yeah. yeah. So he, he's leaving but, 51 but, but feet. That, there's, there's not 59 feet between the current road and his house. In the right of way, there is. Yeah, but between where the road exists currently. No, no. That's, that's what okay. I'm asking, between, between the current western edge of the road and your property, you know what that is. Yeah, so it's approximately 20 feet wide, that grass strip, okay. and I'm asking for 12 feet of it, so I don't have a three foot set of that. Any other questions? Hearing is now closed unless there's any objection to that, and we will move on to the rest of the meeting. John, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, thank we'll you. have the uh, first readings today, and as I mentioned, that the May 17th meeting will be the uh, second reading of the actual ordinance. Okay, thank you, John. So the first ordinance on the agenda tonight is ordinance number 2022-7, an ordinance to the County Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, establishing an economic development non-reverting fund. Whereas the City of Madison will incur certain expenses related to economic development, and whereas the City of Madison wish to establish a fund in order to grant or deposit grant funds and other funds to pay expenses on marketing, marketing strategies, research, grant matches, travel, and special projects for the retention and attraction of business in the community. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, as follows. That an account is established for the purpose of depositing money from the Riverfront District licensing fees, donations, grants, appropriations from city accounts from a lawful source for paying the required obligations for the City of Madison Economic Development. The account shall be named the Economic Development non reverting Fund, and all funds contained in the account shall be expended for the exclusive purpose of paying expenses related to marketing marketing strategies, research, grant matches, travel, and projects associated with the retention and direction of business ventures. The express written approval of the Master Development Commission shall be obtained prior to expenditure of funds for the account. The account shall be non-reverting and exist perpetually unless terminated by subsequent ordinance enacted by the Common Council. If this account is terminated by subsequent ordinance and enacted by the Common Council, the remaining balance of the terminated account shall revert to the general budget of the Common Council. So that is ordinance number 2002-7. Next ordinance has to do with uh, Mr. Burns' request, and it's ordinance number 2022-8, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, vacating right away within the City of Madison, Indiana. Whereas John A. Burns, petitioner, presently owns certain real estate located in the City of Madison, Indiana, and said real estate being situated at 1001 West First Street, which property is described below, and I will not read the written description. Whereas the right of way runs adjacent to the property described below, and whereas property petitioner has proposed that the city of Madison vacate the above described right of way located in the city of Madison, Jefferson County, Indiana. Whereas the Board of Public Works and Safety of the city at its regular scheduled meeting held on April 24th, 2022, pursuant to the request of the petitioner, took official action recommending the vacation of said right of way. To the extent set forth above, whereas platted public ways and places may be vacated within the municipality in accordance with Indiana Code 36-7-3-12, whereas pursuant to Indiana Code 36-7-3-12 concerning the vacation of public ways, required notice of the hearing before the Common Council has been given pursuant to Indiana Code 5-3-1-2 by the advertisement of the notice of the hearing by publication of Madison Courier. 
newspaper of general circulation in the city of Madison, which notice and proof of publication are on file in the office of the court treasurer of the city. Whereas all adjacent landowners have been notified of said vacation pursuant to the statute. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Madison that pursuant to the recommendation of Board of Public Works and Safety adopted as regular meeting on April 4th, 2022, the Common Council hereby adopts the ordinance vacating the above described right of ways. That the following right of way is now and hereby vacated as a public right of way. That the City of Madison hereby reserves for its benefit a private utility which may be pres presently have utilities located above <coughs> on the above des described right of way and easement for public or private utilities located upon the above described right of way and for maintenance, replacement, improvement, and repair thereof. For treasurer of the City of Madison, upon its final adoption of this ordinance, and the signature of the mayor shall cause the certified copy of this right of way vacation ordinance to be entered upon the transfer of records in the office of the auditor of Jefferson County, Indiana, and further recorded in the deeds of records in the office of the auditor of Jefferson County, Indiana. Notice of the hearing, so the right of way is set forth here above, it is duly advertised as provided by law, specifically in the code 36 7 3 12 and 5 3 1 2 by publication in the Madison Courier, which proof of publication now to be correct as the same on file in the office of the court treasurer. And further pursuant to set of upside statutes, notice of said hearing to the abutting property owners it is now found that they were duly made with respect to the vacation of the right of way abutting owners of the property. This order shall be full force of effect after the passage of the law and signature of the mayor. That will be on the second. <clears throat> Thank you, Joe. All right, moving on to the next section here reports, recommendations, and other business from standing select study committees, the city council. Uh, before we get into the items noted there, is there anything council wants to present with regards to uh, business from the standing or select study committees, the city council? There you go. Uh, introduce Tony Steinar here to discuss the river, Riverfront Alcohol Permit Committee applications. Good evening, uh, counselors. Uh, tonight, um, I'm at the Riverfront Development uh, Alcohol Review Committee. I uh, would recommend the approval of three licenses uh, as a consent uh, for Red on Main, Rivertown Grill, and Craft of Coffee. All, all met the, uh, the requirements for their renewals. Council, I think you can either do these in a batch, or if there's something that you want to pull out, you can pull out, um, but these do require your approval. So, just a quick question. So, Tony, the Riverfront Alcohol Beverage Committee met thir last Thursday, April 28th, and those recommendations were in the package for Council. For those three and those recommendations okay. were there. That committee was comprised of David Hughes as president, um, Austin Sims, Main Street, Richard Ice with the Chamber of Commerce, and so a motion to approve all three, or how do you want to do it? I move, um, to, I move to approve uh, all of the Riverfront uh, liquor license renewals as presented. Is there a second? No, I'll second. All in favor? Nice. Uh, discussion. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, discussion. discussion. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. When, when your committee reviewed all of these, they all met or exceeded the three sales requirements. Correct. Yes, it's all, it's all financial records. Those are, those are held in confidence and those are part of the executive session. Any other questions or discussion? Any discussion from the audience on this? Okay, none. All in favor? Uh, uh, aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Tony, moving on. Yeah, moving on to the, the next uh, order of business from the Economic Development, the Economic Development Commission met last week uh, and reviewed uh, findings of fact uh, for two bond ordinances, uh, bond ordinance um, for the Super ATV project and the bond ordinance for the Madison <coughs> Plaza project. Both of those were passed unanimously, and I present those copies to the clerk for the record. Conjunction with that, we have two bills. We have two bills on third reading, which is uh, the first one being the 
Super ATV Bond Ordinance, which is Bond Ordinance Number 3-2022, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, authorizing the issuance of City of Madison, Indiana Economic Development Revenue Bonds and appropriating on authorizing actions from the respect of their two. Roll call vote. Ordinance number 4-2022, and this is the bond ordinance as it relates to the Madison Plaza project, now known as the Shops of San Francisco. So <coughs> this is ordinance number 4-2022, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, authorizing the issuance of the City of Madison, Indiana Economic Development Revenue Bonds and approving and authorizing actions in respect to the two. Roll call. Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Curtis Chapman? Yes. Josh Schaefer? Yes. Lucy Vitillo? Yes. Roger Crow? Yes. And Patrick Seven. Yes. Okay. Moving on to the next thing on the agenda is bills on second reading. And that is bill number 2022-5, or actually 5-2022. An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, amending certain portions of the City of Madison Port Authority Ordinance as found in Chapter 33 of the City of Madison Municipal Authority. This is sponsored by Councilman Tevinall and is here on second reading. Um, so if there are any questions from the audience with regard to this, now would be the time. Or maybe you just want to comment on it? <laughs> Yeah, I brought it. Um, Who's our guest? Yes, uh, Adam Robillard is the manager of uh, Port Authority for us. So he is here to help me answer any questions. Um, you've got this document with your last meeting, I believe, if there's any questions about it. There were three real changes um, and two just to kind of clean up language in the existing ordinance since we're already uh, making changes to it. So happy to entertain any questions or Why uh, specifically James County for the advisory member? And I'll let Adam explain that, but uh, our footprint goes into James County. So I'll sure, the vast majority of our business. Uh, Adam, if you don't mind going to the podium, oh, we can hear you. Thank you. Um, yeah, great question. So, a uh, vast majority of our operational, uh, our day to day business and uh, revenue actually comes out of James County. Um, and uh, ultimately, they're a, a big stakeholder and partner in any growth and development in the future. Uh, have, bringing them uh, a voice to the table is what's important for uh, growth in the future. They, they haven't had that before, and this is something they've requested. Yeah, and I can say from experience, we've had multiple dealings with James County and their Port Authority and done multiple projects together. It's always been a good partnership, and I think this is a nice way to play. So, I agree. And I would just add that. Um, what you're seeing is a, a bit of a transformation of the Port Authority from the, the narrow focus of just the short line railroad to actually what are the capabilities uh, of a Port Authority, how do we grow economic development in our region through the um, structure of a Port Authority rather than just operating a railroad. So I'm happy to see under Adam's leadership and Tony's partnership with him, uh, the expansion is, uh, of, of what the Port Authority wants to do and how it brings business to the community beyond just a railroad. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so Joe, I took you to the Patrick and Fuller's email asking for some clarification. Are the two, let's see, are the advisory members to be appointed by the mayor with consent council or just the mayor based on the language? I believe the, uh, the James County position is actually going to be appointed by the board of Port Authority. And, and, then, the and then the advisory member would be appointed by the mayor. Okay. 
And then the other question was just about the language in that first sentence. Do we need to clarify seven voting members and two advisory members? Um, the Port Authority shall be governed by a board of directors consisting of seven members. It, the board membership is seven members. Instead of seven voting members and up to two advisory members? It would be it, seven members and two advisory members. Sorry. So I mean, you can, yeah. if you want to yeah. clarify that. Do you, you don't think it's necessary. I, I do not think it's necessary. You don't know where it is. Council of the City of Madison, Indiana to repeal and replace sections 52.20, of the City of Madison Code of Ordinances for selection of rates and charges for the use and services rendered by the waterworks system in the City of Madison, Indiana. This is sponsored by Councilman Council, um, what you'll see here is an amendment to a broader ordinance that governs uh, governs our, our water infrastructure. I'd like to make a, a couple of comments, or actually read a statement, and then talk about you know how the public comment portion uh, I would like to see handled today, uh, because we have guests here who can answer uh, specific questions on various parts of this project. Since the moment we walked into City Hall, all of us has rolled up our sleeves and gotten to work on the city's behalf. As you've heard me state before, our job is to continue the unfinished work of our predecessors, as well as pursue our own initiatives to improve the quality of life for all of Madison. Those initiatives were clearly established that address public safety, economic opportunity, and quality of life. The health of any community is directly, directly related to its investment whether it be in law enforcement, streets, sidewalks, parks, fire department, tourism, light elimination, the list goes on. Over the past two years, one key initiative has been to address deferred maintenance in our water infrastructure and to ensure we have a sustainable, clean drinking water system for all of our customers, both city and county residences, residents and businesses. An important part of any strategy is about collecting the data forming a plan to address critical needs, and then financing and executing that plan. The City of Madison utility operation is quite comprehensive with thousands of customers, miles of lines, and a complex infrastructure that includes pumps, uh, treatment facilities, stores our water, and distributes, it literally to hundred, uh, distributes literally hundreds of millions of gallons of water a year. But this infrastructure doesn't last forever, and like my predecessor who had to deal with major upgrades to our sewer system, we have to deal with issues relating to our water, stormwater, trash, and recycling. We have addressed these problems head on and worked hard to minimize the impact on our system users. As it relates to tonight's topic of water rates and charges, this process has been underway for two years that involved asset management planning, critical needs assessments after a 20-year absence of investment, system design, cost estimates, grants and other funding sources, applications for financing, uh, a comprehensive water rate study and recommendations, and now the ordinance for rates and charges, all of which is just to get us to the starting line of a major $13 million investment for the benefit of our community. Please keep in mind that state law requires that our utility be only supported by user fees, and those fees have to be sufficient to adequately maintain our system. And unlike any normal business that, that can adjust its revenue stream as costs change, revenue for our utility can only be captured via an ordinance passed by city council and the mayor, and our operation can only break even. 
There's no profit motive embedded in our rates. So what's different about this project? We received the SRF approval last week for our preliminary engineering review. The new rates established will address the lack of capital replacement reserves that has, or that is, critical for future investment. An analysis of our costs was incorporated so that the pricing for all users would be fair. Almost all of the debt service of the new financing is being borne by the City of Madison residents and the revised ordinance calls for a review of rates at least every five years so we can avoid monumental increases in the future and keep our rates some of the most affordable in the entire state. It's been 20 years since we've made a significant investment in our water infrastructure and 14 years since we've changed our rate structure. What are we proposing? On average, all users will experience less than a $6 per month increase in their water to fund this investment. We'll, we'll, we will overcome the cumulative impact of inflation, which has been significant, and set aside future funds so that additional investment can occur without the need for more debt. Nobody wants to increase water rates and charges, but this is an investment we need to make for the future of our city. For tonight's meeting, I would like to introduce our guests, Kevin, Kevin Mulliken and Tracy Wine with Sherman Barber Mul Mulliken. <coughs> Brian Jackson, Superintendent of our Utility Department. Rob Bellucci with Commonwealth Engineering. And I'd like to use the following format so that we can have structure around tonight's meeting. First, I'd like to uh, invite the public uh, for public statements. Uh, when you come to the podium, please identify yourself with your name and address, and please direct your public statements to council. This is an information session. This is so we can learn uh, any concerns that you have about the proposed project or rate increases. We will have a public hearing at the next meeting, which will be May 17th, which is prior to the third reading. Uh, if there are easy questions during the public statements, uh, we'll call on uh, one of our guests to respond. After public statements, I'll ask council if any of them have any statement or questions in this order. Legal, scope of the project, or financial. After all the business is done, this will move to third reading and the public hearing will be at the May 17th meeting. So now, uh, with that uh, structure, I'd like to invite anyone who would like to come to the podium and address council. Excuse me, Mayor. Mayor, do you have a copy of that format for council so we know what we're following along with? Uh, we shred that in the record and I'll pass it on to you. Thank you. Anybody from the public who wants to address this uh, ordinance? Seeing none. Anything from the council? several things within these proposed changes that um, are also beyond the scope of just increases in user fees. Um, some additions that are being made to our ordinances regulating water and uh, Brian, just might be the best. best. Brian, would you mind coming to the we'll, yeah. we'll address uh, sure. with yours yeah. and Joe's assistance any yeah. uh, statements you may have, Council, on uh, the legal aspect of it. Right, we were trying to clean up some stuff and give us a little more authority in some areas. But yes, it's a repeal and replace to improve our entire ordinance, not just the rate ordinance, that is correct. Yeah, and, and, a, and a lot of it, I mean, makes, makes total sense. Um, some of that have concerns about um, sure. uh, where meters are being- could you, I'm sorry, Council, could you refer to the, the section you referred yeah, to? Yeah, this, this first, this will be under uh, page three, uh, tapping and inspection fees. Mm -hmm. um, 
in, in the event an inside meter is permitted, the following shall apply. Uh, the user shall maintain its expense all piping beginning at the service connection. Where Where is the service connection? Well, they, have a, they have a shut off valve outside in the street. The, the small? Yes. Okay. Um, Generally, you won't anymore. We really don't allow those. We place the meters outside for numerous reasons. But we have several, we're in Old City, that are still inside, but eventually those will all be outside. And that's, that was my, my question. Um, so when, when those are replaced, you're just leaving the old meter inside the home, you're not actually going to that, That's correct, that'll be that part of their issue. infrastructure, that's correct. Okay, and has that been policy of the water department when they've replaced other inside meters? Yes, we've been replacing the inside meters quite some time. It's really not a complex task. You just put a pipe around it. If you don't want the meter, it's it's a, a couple of valves and a pipe. It's not really that big of a deal. That's what the state uses is 4,000, but ultimately it really doesn't change the total calculation yeah. because when you change one, it, it adjusts the other. Yeah, that's so. yeah I, I, I ran that. Yeah, yeah if you it's run a it, sample. And <coughs> but what, what I did find, which the public may find this interesting, is that uh, people who live in a multi um, resident building apartment or something, apartment. they pay about a 30 percent surcharge for water. Yes, the, the reason it's for apartments is because, see, all the residents pay the minimum bill. And if you, an apartment that you would use like 150,000 gallons, they would be, get, you know, say there's 20 apartments. Instead of them being vigil, in, billed individually, you're billing them all as one, so they're getting a discount. And the way the ordinance is structured, or that's why the multi-user fees are fees there, if you have 20 separate apartments, they should be really be 20 separate dwellings, just like your house was a separate dwelling. So that's what the multi-user fee tries to do. It tries to balance out that, if that makes any sense. So folks who live in a one-bedroom apartment could use less than 4,000 gallons of time. Well, generally the apartments and the trailer parks, they pay one, the, the owner pays and they, I don't know how they bill their apartment users. If you live in an apartment at Presidents or somewhere like that, I don't think you have a water bill. I think you pay your rent and the water's included. And that's how it is in some of the mobile home parks, too. Okay. And especially mobile home parks, because, you know, there's like 50, some more than that, but just down here. When you do use the EU, the multi-user multi calculation, it helps balance it so that each, you account for more each individual residence, where it doesn't. If you just, if you build them 200,000 gallons, they would be the huge break, the owner of the mobile home park, really. This formula is, is there to try to account for what would be missed if they were built individually. individually. Yes, that's okay. exactly right. Okay. That's a good question. I've had to explain that many times. <laughs> uh, page six: the fees for unmetered private fire hydrants. Uh, that's an eighty-two percent increase. Why? Why is that increase? Well, I, actually, never mind. Seventy-nine. Oh, no, my actual question, sorry. I've got to the whole thing. I'm sorry, could you clarify, is that page, page six page, what? Page six, Which? under section five. Oh, no, the fire that, hydrant. The, the, the difference in the cost per charge by month and then charge by year, those two don't add up. 5784 a month would be 69408, and we're at 68492 a year. Okay, I'll have to check that, I mean, I don't. Okay. That's an easy fix. Yeah, you know, don't want to miss out on well, and it should be actually in the rate study. Did you compare it to the rate study? Uh, and then it's possible I made a typographical error, so that I mean, that's that's just, yeah, just something that's I'm entirely sure. possible. Okay. But I, but those numbers should have come from the rate study, I believe. The six eighty four ninety two is in the rate study, so it's possible I divided that wrong. Okay. 
because we ended up having to bill it by the month sometimes, so that's why I put that in there. That was more from the benefit of my office personnel in the billing office than it was for the ordinance. But, okay. um, page seven under uh, meter deposits, um, section B that covers how the uh, deposit is applied to unpaid bills. If somebody who's paid a, a deposit has money left over to be refunded to them and they never cash that check, what happens to those funds? Uh, we have to go by the state laws on that. We hold it for so long, and if they never cash it, then eventually it gets redeposited in our account and the check's canceled. Okay. I don't know what the time frame is on that. Okay. But and it's, if, if per se, right. law, if it never cashed, it rolls back in. It rolls back into our coffers, yes. Okay. That happens sometimes, but, and that's usually because, yeah, I don't know, there's probably multiple, multitude of reasons why that happens, but. It doesn't happen a lot. Uh, page eight, under the disconnect and reconnect charge, which would be uh, section B about halfway down. Yep, I got it. Um, a, it says a reconnection will not be made after until after all delinquent bills and charges have been paid. Um, so what if there's a portion of the bill that's not yet passed due when the water is shut off? Does that that, that doesn't have to be paid. We never charge that. Okay. Now some people come in and say, just pay the whole thing, but we only pay, we can only per ordinance, and this that's the same as the one, the current one. Yeah. So well, so that's, that's 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 my because when we bill you, your due date is like the 25th, and the disconnect date ends up if you hadn't paid your last month bill, the disconnect date is probably sometime in the middle of the month. So you don't have to pay the portion that's not due until the 25th only the past due portion plus the reconnected. So but that's always been like that. Why and, and why don't we require the entire bill to be paid? Because it's not due yet. Restored. The final day's not there yet. If it's not due to the 25th, we can't make them pay it on the 15th. You follow what I'm saying? In a, in a, in a sense, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, their current bill isn't past due yet. It's their past due bill that's past due is the reason they were disconnected. So they've been billed again but it's not really due until the 25th. So we legally, I cannot make them pay what's not past due yet. Council, is that, would that be appropriate to say that we couldn't require them to pay that if it's not? Well, you've got to, you would have to marry up the dates. Right. I mean, you'd have to marry up the dates, whatever it is. And if there's a due date and something's, and something's due, I don't think that you can uh, require that after I mean, you don't require it. I don't know, I can look into that. I, mean, I think it's fairly similar to electric bills in that fashion. Yeah, I, I don't think, I mean, if they pay their past due bill and their reconnect fee, that makes them current with our current billing system. So how- I, you know, I, I, I understand that. I'm, I'm also just trying to think about making sure the bills are- I, I understand, and, and I understand that, but, but I mean, that, that's a legal issue, and I don't think you can do that. I can look into it. Yeah, okay. Okay. How many times do you allow them to be past due? An infinite number of times. Mm -hmm. It's coming out for the, are you going to look in to see if there's a parameter for that? Yeah. Well, wait a second. You, they're past due until they get cut off. Or you're saying. But they can come back in and pay only what's past due to get turned back on. So how many times can they continue to do that? The rest of their lives. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing you can, you, you, I mean. The water company's a monopoly. You can't just you can't say you can never have your water again. I mean, when we're talking about public utilities, it's a little different. It's it's not run like business, and so um, I don't think uh, I don't know if, if there's an ordinance out there that's, that says I, that I've never seen one. I've never seen one that would allow that because it's. A well, I mean, is that what you're advocating that they that if they're has to do so many times they cannot get water? Well, I mean, I think there should be a penalty if they're continually passing there it. It creates. It's, it's, now, the, the, there's $25 penalty. Now, now that can be increased, and that's always an option. The, the issue with that, and I contemplated that in this, in this ordinance, raising that fee. But the, the problem with that is most of the people that are disconnected don't have enough money to pay the bill in the first place. And if I raise that fee, that just penalizes them and makes their lives harder. And, and the $25, trust me, initially, some of them, I want to charge 100 
but it's 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 not going to be fair to them because it's the same people nine times out of ten paying the fee, and in general they cannot afford it. And and I the twenty five is that fair? I think so. Is it enough? Maybe, maybe not. That that's up for debate. But you know, I I, I weigh a lot of things when I make these decisions, and it's and it's how many shutoffs do you have? Anywhere I t from 150 to 200, it, it depends on the season and, and the different things. It, unfortunately, around Christmas we have more, uh, but uh, it's we have two routes. And generally, you have about 50 in the downtown route, or 40 to 50, and sometimes 70 to 80 in the, the hilltop route. We've had more. I mean, we've had we've had as many as, like I said, 200. We've had as few as 140, 150 a month. But uh, but. When we do the disconnects, 60 to 70% of the people are the same ones. And they're struggling month to month, and I don't want to exacerbate their issues. And, and I mean, and, and that, I, that, that, that's your old decision. I mean, that 25 can be changed to a number you think is fairer than 25. Um, I mean, the, the, I work for you. The, the $25, in my opinion, they're struggling to pay their bills. I, I, I agree. I, 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 initially, I wasn't so kind, but the longer I've been here, the people I see, it, it is. It's, you, you end up penalizing the people that need the most help. And I, I don't know how else to put that. And that there's nothing. And, and they can't go elsewhere for water. Right. Either. So, so no. if, if they need water and they can get back on the top, I don't know. Right. If they're struggling paying our water bills, they're struggling. Brian, okay. how many disconnections do you have for non residential users? You mean for like rental homes? No, for commercial. Business. Industrial. Not near as many, one or two a month, but, but generally they, they are usually not very many, one to two a month, if that. Uh, most of them sign up for automatic payment or something like that, so it's, unless that, that happens there, but not, not a lot. And when you say commercial, there's, I mean, there's little mom and pop all the way up to big giant ones now. Usually the ones that end up disconnected are like the Sherry's hair, hair salon down on 3rd Street or something, something along those lines. I, there's not a Sherry's hair salon. I'm just <laughs> citing an example. Those are usually the kind that get disconnected, the commercial type I think you're talking about. Dan, you look like you got a question. Well, I knew about trying to sign up for trail and I don't want to waste time. Well, I'm just curious, what's, it, it, does that $25 fee call, cause for a prolonged life? What's the average time that someone has their water shut? Uh, generally, if they get in, oh no, no, no. That's right. That's right. When, when we disconnect, we disconnect first thing in the morning, and generally they find out quick. And, and usually, if they've gotten in by between no later than two or three, it depends on who we have on, how many guys we have available. They're turned back on that day. Most people are turned back on the same day, and, and which is really good because a lot of companies turn them on the next day. But, but we try to, to get there as quick as possible. We're, I mean, the city is only so big, so we can get there pretty quickly. Now, occasionally we have somebody upset. So it doesn't sound like the $25 is excessive. It would cause them to no. have outage for long periods. Thank you. No, that has no bearing on how quick they're reconnected. The one, but that's the one piece we've looked at more than anything. The, the, re, the reason, I want some teeth, so if somebody does mess with something, I want to be able to get after them. That's why in there it says up to $100. That doesn't mean we're going to find them, like if the homeowner goes and turns it on and, and it didn't have a licensed plumber. That's why the wording is put up to $100. That means we don't, have to, we don't find them anything. And generally, 99 times of 100, we won't. But if somebody starts method messing with our system that we don't want them to mess with, we have to have something that gives us some teeth to fight back. I, I, I agree with you there, but I, I, I feel it could be worded differently to allow a property owner or a plumber or a somebody who does plumbing work who's not a licensed plumber to be able to, to utilize that lab without the need to notify the water department every time it's done. And I'm also speaking from personal experience working on old houses. 
lot of times you get into them and those shut off valves in the house are not very frozen good. up, won't work, they're already <coughs> leaking, and, and you've got to right. get out there. Do that we nightmare. can look at that, I mean, and try to reword that. I mean, uh, I, mean I would ask if the uh, councilman has a, a recommendation on warnings, you could submit that to us to review. Gotcha. Uh, Is your concern that just emergencies or any time it needs to be shut off? I think, I think any any time it needs to be shut off during during work because it you've got to define what an emergency is in, in that case. Well, and I, I'm, I don't want to encourage too many people to turn them off either, though. No, no, and, and I think you, you need some teeth to go after to <coughs> damage the yes. shutoffs at the meter, but I, I think the way this is worded, maybe. Well, I, I mean, so. it's it's hard to word yeah. to allow yeah. every scenario or a scenario that you might have in mind that then isn't misinterpreted to say, well, I, I can't, it kind of says I can do that. And, you know, the other thing, and when I looked at that, we had a lot of conversation about yeah, this and tried to put some flexibility in it. It's not it's not practical that, you know, the city is fining uh, homeowners uh, for not using a plumber. What, you, what we're really saying is here, we want to discourage anybody, not encourage them uh, to, to do something, remove the lid, remove the well cover, deal with, deal with the meter, do something. We want to discourage that. Uh, because there could be some liability on the city too if things aren't placed back the way they are. And what's really on my mind when I look at this is, if someone takes that lid off and they're not, they don't put it back on securely, and then another person steps through the grass and then they, you know, fall into the to the meter well, uh, we've allowed kind of other people to do that with this policy. And so that's why I think that uh, right, putting I, something I, in there. Yeah, I took this from another control, city. Yeah, and I mean, I, the, the 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 body of it to try to uh, try to tweak it to us because he's right he, we've got to have something to protect us if something happens and that's I mean and I'm open trust me I'm fine with anybody I'm modifying fine. anything I've got a proposal for this amendment here uh, instead of removing the language about licensed plumbers uh, any person accepting an emergency situation turns water off a certain turns water service or any user of water off curb trough valve any meter or any other juncture of the city distribution system without permission from the water department shall be fined up to $100 per expense in the emergency situation, except that above, it shall be that person's obligation to provide reasonably detailed written notice of the particulars within three business days thereafter to the Madison Water Filling Office. The person shall be fined up to $100 for each failure to do so. That would just I'm fine with the, that. the licensed plumber requirement. If right. somebody has to do maintenance, they can call the water department. I mean, that seems reasonable. Right, yeah. Or, or and I would mention that that time. I, I, I agree with you there. I think that makes it yes. a, little, a little more easy to manage. I'm flexible. And then, and then what would you think about um, the, the requirement to notify the water office within three days when damage has occurred? Yeah. Or some, you know, something along those lines. Rather than every instance. Because you think that if they damage it, they're going to they're gonna notify us? <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, <but laughs> yeah. I mean, just does your office want to look through every every written well, and, and like I said, this was really designed more to give us some teeth. Nine times out of ten, if you go to work on your house, you're going to pop the meter, you're going to turn it off and turn it back on, you're not going to tell anybody. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's probably what's going to happen most of the time. But if you damage it, and we say, okay, we saw Patrick messing with his meter, <coughs> we know we've got this, it's come back to us. But I'm okay with his wording. I mean, um, I mean, and as long as you're responsible for it, I'm responsible. So responsible party. Do we want teeth in it, or do we just want notification if they get in? No, I want I want some teeth because if well, they what, do what something damage-wise, then what about rather than a fine for each failure to notify you? Uh, well, that's just up to a hundred. I doubt it. Well, but that that leaves a lot of uh, leeway to, up to your office to determine what is the fine. Why? And does it depend on the situation? Or Right. Broad. It's, it's really broad. Right. Um, but what about the, the fine would be um, the cost of, of any damage or you know, rather than just a general ability to levy a fine, it would be the cost of, of any repairs necessary, which would potentially allow you to bill more than $100 to the um, it, it sounds like there's a lot. <laughs> this is a hot topic. Yes. On, on, on this one, and, I, mean, I, I don't know, I'll just make a recommendation. You guys do what you want to. But you 
it might make sense to get together with Brian, come up with whatever language it is, and you know, this can be amended. You can wait three readings and just amend this section at a later date, or whatever you want to do. I don't, I just, I don't want to. It's very difficult to just amend on the fly. And, yeah. And so I don't. Right. We, what, what, what he's saying is what we do is we eliminate B from this ordinance repeal, and we can address it at a later date. I'm fine with that. I mean, I, like I said, I'm pretty flexible. Okay. I, I would move to remove section B under 52.28. Yes. Uh, so, um, Councilman Tomo is moving to amend <coughs> 52.28, section 52.28 of the section, section B and remove that. Um, is there a second? Second. <coughs> Any discussion that we haven't had? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so that will be removed. Okay, any other you questions? Got your questions back here? I got one more. Uh, section two on that same page. Uh, it is the sense of the Common Council and New Water Works rate study should be performed at least once every five years. And this, I guess, is more for Joe. Is this the way this is worded, is this directing the water department to order that water study, or is it just saying that it is generally we should? It is just saying that um, um, it, it's the it's the expectation that every five years it should be done. It's not saying that you have to, um, and it's not saying that you're limited to every five years. It can be more than that. Um, the goal of this is something that the mayor was very passionate about and um, in looking at was you know, the fact that we have the issue with any of these things are you've got to spend a ton of money in order to figure out whether you need to upgrades or not. Um, and so sometimes you want to avoid spending that money, but it's probably necessary given just the way the economy works and inflation works and everything. So the thought is that every five years you, uh, you do a rate study, and theoretically, if you do it every five years, it may not be as costly each time because you're not correcting right. it. Uh, you're just updating instead of doing something brand new. Probably the, my my goal behind this was to give council something, a future council something that they can look at and say, we really need to do this. Let's take a look at it, and you can then make the decision on. Whether whether you know rates need to be increased or not, um, but the the goal is to get to a point where we're talking about very small incremental increases that uh, address the impact of inflation, uh, because um, that has had a pretty disastrous that disastrous impact too since it's been 14 years since we dealt with rates. I think this helps any future council, candidly, and also the water department. So any other questions from council? I have four to two questions previously, Joe, about section 52.22 and 52.20 D, the user definitions, and did you review those to feel like they were, that the language was contradictory or not contradictory? I didn't see that there were an issue. Okay, and then say 220 E. Yes, I'm oh, sorry, can you slow down what section you want? 5220 E as well. So the first question was just regarding the user definitions and the <coughs> single user uh, residences can have multiple uh, meters in certain instances. And Brian explained to me why that is, but if Joe's satisfied. I didn't, see, I didn't see any problem with that. We well, well, the other attorney responded, but you must not have been yeah. CC'd on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, the, the other attorney, he didn't respond to it, but the other attorney who, who helped construct the ordinance okay. and review it, he responded to that. I, I, I thought you were on the menu. Well, he didn't have any issue. Okay. No, he, was, he said my response is he agreed. Yes. Okay. I, I don't remember the specifics, Josh, but I, I think I remember saying that one now. I just know Joe told me to look at it. So yeah. <laughs> if he looked at it and says, I'm satisfied. Council, any other questions on the legal side of things? Legal side or anything? Uh, let's uh, oh, sorry. finish up legal, and then we'll move on to scope of project. Okay, thank you. 
couple of projects. Uh, Rob, maybe come up to the podium in case there are questions related to preliminary engineering review. I'm sure you all had a chance to enjoy the 900-page document that Rob so diligently prepared, which was approved by uh, uh, the State Revolving uh, Fund. person there and address any questions that might come up with regard to the water instead. Any questions on this? Yes, yeah, so I have a statement to read regarding uh, concern from our largest customer, which would fall under the financial <coughs> category. Point of order. Largest customer, City Madison. Our three largest rural water Thank customers. You. Thank you. You want to clarify who they are? DuPont, Rikers Ridge, and Kane? Thank you. Correct? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this letter I have a copy for each council member, and the mayor's already received a signed copy, so I'll read it for the record. The three water, the three rural water utilities, Kane and DuPont and Rikers Ridge, have received copies of the Madison Water Rate Study. The utilities have retained the services of a water rate consultant to review the proposed rates and an engineer to investigate an alternate source of water supply. At this time, we want to convey the following information to you. The three rural water utilities you have a question? The three rural water utilities mission is to protect our customers by controlling the cost of water and developing reliable alternative or additional water sources for the future. The three rural water utilities preliminary consensus is that the proposed water rates are not equitable in terms of their application to the rural water companies. The three rural water utilities intend to investigate a viable financial and engineering alternatives that will enable them to secure water supply based on more equitable water rates. The three rural water utilities are aware this rate increase is the first of more planned rate increases, which are highly probable to be based on the same <coughs> studies. The three rural water utilities explicitly advise the City of Madison to not make or plan any major financial expenditures for the purpose of supplying the rural water companies. There is a possibility that the three rural water utilities may terminate their water purchase relationship with the city of Madison, which as Brian confirmed is roughly $738,000 annually. Right. Right. About 22% of our revenue. 22%? Right. But they, but they use about 40% of the water. Okay. We realize the city administration has been working on the water rate increase for at least a couple of years and has stated the rural utilities have been given adequate notice of the proposed increase. It is important to note that rural utilities were not a part of the water rate study process and could not begin an evaluation of the proposed increases until the city's water rate study was complete. We are moving forward with our evaluation as quickly as possible. The three rural water utilities did not receive a copy of the study until approximately three weeks ago. Shortly after receiving the study, we met as a group to discuss our options. We requested to meet directly with the city's rate consultant to discuss the study, but the city administration objected to such a meeting. We have requested and received additional information from the city administration regarding the details used in the rate study. A few of our requests are still outstanding. However, the administration has advised they are in the process of obtaining the requested information. It is very likely our consultants will have additional information requests in order for them to complete their evaluations. It is our intention to complete the water rate evaluation and present our findings during, <coughs> excuse me, during your public water rate hearing on May 17, 2022. The city of Madison has been a reliable and equitable price source of water for the three rural water utilities for many years, and the seller and customer relationship has worked well for all parties. We are open to having further discussions with the city administration in order to reach an agreement on an equitable water rate so this relationship can continue. We have designated DuPont Water Director David Ferguson to be our point of contact, as information is listed. Uh, the mayor received a signed copy. This one is from Tad Brinson, the president of Canaan Utilities Corporation, Doug Hobbs, president of DuPont Water Company and Bobby Little, president of Rikers Ridge Water Company. Are there any questions? Uh, 
questions or comments for Kevin from the council? Um, I, I have some concerns with the rates generally. Um, these probably aren't maybe for Kevin, but um, the way that um, we've gone about figuring what, what we need to spend, um, the improvements that we need to be made, the $13 million for that, that's My big concern is with the amount that goes into the capital improvement reserve, the 618,000. Um, that's that's my biggest concern. I, I did some calculations. Um, if we were to reduce what we put into the capital improvement reserve each year by $300,000, we'd still still have $318,250 a year being put away. Um, that's leaving everything else the same, that would drop the cost for a thousand gallons of water to 242 and require an increase of rates around 68.44%. My calculations are correct. Um, I guess this is more for council to, to think about and discuss. Uh, and then if, if we reduce the pilots, the payment in lieu of taxes, which to me, I, I, I don't really understand the point of it. I, I understand the concept of it, but it's it's just additional revenue being taken out of the, the water department's coffers to go into city hall's coffers. Uh, city, city Madison. I mean, city, city yeah, Madison. that's a yeah. point of clarification there. Um, so, in, in, in if we remove the pilot the payment in lieu of taxes and also reduce the capital improvement fund by three hundred thousand dollars. That would bring the cost of a thousand gallons of water to 229, uh, down from the proposed 280. So, are you referring to the county? No, this, this is, is this is for the entire study here because uh, the, the cost of a thousand gallons impacts all the all the variables that go into forecasting the, the percentage uh, required for an increase. Um, if, if we if we cut the capital improvement reserve by three hundred thousand dollars and get rid of the pilot of whatever thousand dollars that is, uh, that would bring the required increase in rates down to 65.57%. Uh, would you like to put that in a dollar amount, please? A dollar, in a dollar amount? Way. I thought my point here is, and while you're looking up the dollar amount, which is, I think, more relevant rather than <coughs> percentage, our water rates are some of the lowest in the entire state. And, and one of the uh, issues we've had for 20 years is not setting aside money for capital replacements. Uh, now you're proposing set aside less money for future capital replacements. We have a, after this investment is made, we will have a $25 million investment in our water works. That depreciates every year, particularly pumps um, and treatment and maintenance that's required on all of our, our storage towers. I don't think it would be prudent to essentially set ourselves up to have to borrow more money in the future for capital replacements when we can, you know, with literally a couple of dollars a month spread out over the thousands of users, um, <coughs> manage to have a properly funded capital replacement reserve. As it relates to the pilot, which is it's called a payment in lieu of taxes. There are a lot of things that the state statute allows us to do and incorporate into our rates. Uh, the city of Madison has been collecting a pilot for 20 years or more, Kevin. Uh, the city of Madison corporate tax rate is about 1.24%. Uh, one of the things the state statute allows us to do is uh, assess a payment in lieu of taxes uh, and embed that into the water rates, which we've been doing for a couple of decades or longer and then use those funds for other much needed uh, uses across the city. And as you know, as we talked about the need for capital planning, we have tremendous amount of assets. In fact, we probably have close to $75 million in assets in the city and no funded replacement reserves on any of those. So uh, my, my response to that is, you know, the 
the amount that's in the uh, water stu or in the study for payment in lieu of taxes is a very, very small dollar amount. And I think it's prudent to be looking across our horizon on what our investments need to be in the future. And the schedule of that is in the water rate study. So we have adequate cap working capital in order to fund those out of cash flow rather than having to go through the time and expense of borrowing again. And there's a tremendous need all across the city for sidewalks, parks, uh, streets, uh, playground equipment, and that's what this money would be used for uh, in, the, in the pilot, which is just, again, it's about 1.24% a year assessed on uh, only, only, those assets within our waterworks uh, infrastructure that's in the city limits. So county is not not you know paying for any of that at all. If we retain the pilot, uh, would you have any objection to establishing a separate fund, a defined fund within city accounts to determine what the pilot can and cannot be spent on? Uh, yes, because it would come through the budget process as additional revenue. I I, I would I, I'm I'm cautious of saying let's start changing the rules of appropriations, because I don't think that's necessary. But every year you get to look at the budget and how we spend the money and where the money's coming from to cover it. So I think it's already in the budget process because what you'll see when we do that is uh, one, of our, one of the main roles of our clerk treasurer is projecting revenue from all sources. And, uh, and then we have to demonstrate to you that and Department of Local Government Finance that there's sufficient revenues to cover our proposed appropriations. They will not give us approval on our budget unless it's a balanced budget. I think, I think, Councilman, your point's a good one, but I think it's already taken care of in the budget process because of the way it works with uh, our revenue and appropriation process. And Brian, I think well, you Well, I was just going to address the capital. You, you think you have too much capital. I mean, actually, the recommendation of it was to have more capital than what we're currently putting in there to address our needs because, I mean, the project takes care of blatantly obvious projects or issues with our system, but we have to maintain, we have seven wells. The newest one was built in 2000, two of them were built in 1953. There's a, a whole plethora of stuff that has to be addressed every year that we're gonna start addressing that happened. It has never been addressed because there was no money. Yeah, and that's, that's what the $30 then, million dollar bond is beginning to address. <laughs> this, this is additional on top of that to provide maintenance for the future after this project and for things not included. Not just making this. I mean, it, it's vehicle and equipment replacement, loop dead end mains, map distribution, add, address pressure problems throughout the system, maintain and replace the replace mains with history of breaks. But there's a, a lot of those. Which, which, which is all which is all good. It just, to me, I'm, I'm trying to reduce the impact on, on local rate consumers. And I, I think in, in the short run, we're, we're investing so heavily through this bond right. that we may be better suited to reduce what we're putting away in the capital improvement reserve. Right, but if, if you don't take care of the funds now, later on it's gonna cost more to get that money. See, that that's that, that's what I... Well, but this, this money for the capital improvement reserve, we're not bonding that. This is no. strictly from user fees, which... We want to avoid bonding in the future. Every, which, but yeah, yes. yeah, I agree. Yeah. Which every, every five years, we can do a rate study and increase it immediately. No, there's no borrowing costs for, for increasing what we could put in there if it's all done by, by rate increases. There's, an, there's a cost, obviously, because again, again, the goal here is uh, let's correct the deficiencies of methodology um, and, and look at this with uh, an eye toward the future that deals with our problems and minimizes our reliance on debt and larger future rate increases. It really is our goal to you know, deal with these critical needs, but set aside sufficient funds so we never have to borrow again. And the future increases that council and the mayor's office and the water department will be reviewing could be much smaller as it relates to inflation. Um, it, it would be a little, there's some irony in, candidly, in um, we haven't made any investment in 20 years and now we're saying that let's not make too much investment in the future uh, because we want to, I think uh, reduce you know the, the the burden on our households, which I'm in favor of, by a dollar a month or something. Uh, we, uh, so, so if, if we you, let me finish my, my thought here real quick. Is that uh, online uh, we've included the water rate study, uh, a very detailed question and answer. We also uh, had in there uh, uh, where uh, Mr. Mulligan had quantified the 
the county commissioners what a rate reduction would be and the financial benefit of that to all users over the term of the loan. And then we also had in there a rate comparison study, uh, Baker Tilly, which is well renowned for a county firm doing water rate studies statewide. Uh, we compared our rates after the uh, increase to state averages based on the last study they did, which was 2019, which now, as you see, inflation is much higher than it's, than it's been in the, really in the last 14 years. And then on top of that, we compared it to uh, other communities of our size. And there's a significant uh, affordability already included in our rates. Nobody wants to raise rates, but we have a really good opportunity right now to deal with it more pragmatically and, uh, and not be, you know, uh, not potentially put us in a situation where we've got to go borrow money again for another major capital expenditure. That's my hesitancy to uh, perhaps uh, uh, lower lower the the, the, the monthly uh, uh, dollar amount charge. Kevin, you might want to. Do you have any thoughts on that or not? But well, just to clarify, uh, maybe for you all, um, a, uh, a municipal in Indiana can go about uh, including these types of expenditures in their rates a couple of different ways. Um, one option would have been to. Just a depreciation amount, which would have been significantly more. Um, and the purpose of these funds is uh, not really to set them aside so much as to have them available for capital expenditure. So, uh, if you've got uh, seven vehicles that the utility owns, and you have to replace one every seven years, uh, so you're going to be replacing one every year. Uh, that comes out of that. So, so it's not really just a set aside, it, it is to replace existing equipment and to pay for additional items of infrastructure along the way. Uh, I, I, I completely agree with you, Mayor Borg, about being pragmatic in our approach and, and how we, we need this investment in our water utility. Um, Brian will tell you that interest in the way the water department works long, long before I got <laughs> I, I, if, if we look at, um, we, if we retain the pilot and reduce the uh, capital improvement by 300,000, it would change the, uh, for the first 5,000 gallons, the rate per thousand would be uh, 399 down from 425, I believe. So, uh, so you're saying reduce our annual capital replacement by 50% to save 20, Six cents per thousand gallons. Well, I mean, we're we're talking, you know, over over the entire thing. I mean, really, we're arguing uh, this increase as proposed for a minimum bill would be seven dollars and twenty-five cents. Um, when you include the hydrogen fee and the increase in sales tax. So, I mean, if, if we're talking percentages, yeah, fairly substantial. If we're talking dollar amounts, not really. But there's a lot of people in town on very small fixed budgets. It's tough to absorb. Um, it goes back to our discussion on is $25 reasonable, unreasonable for the, the disconnect fee. Um, so I I would move that we um, reduce the capital improvement reserve uh, to $318,250 per year and adjust the rate accordingly. Can you uh, direct us to the page of the water rate study, if you don't mind? Uh, page Maybe I'll get to it for eight, I think. Uh, that's, well, that, that shows the water rate increases. Uh, page 20 is where the capital increases. So on page, yes, Kevin, you might have that in front of you. Maybe describe what the schedule of plant capital improvements and plant rehabilitation calculation of the annual reserve requirements are. We have, well, let's say, I'm sorry, we have a motion. You so say you're, uh, can you clarify your motion, please? Uh, yeah, I should, to break it up, 
write it down, make it easier. Uh, I move we, uh, I, I'll take my last motion off the table. I move we reduce the increase in, the required increase in rates to 68.44%. So, so essentially that's going to change what's in the ordinance. Because we have to, we have to recalculate the rate study based upon that, and then that will change the figures in the ordinance, correct? Brian? Yeah. It's Discussion? Kevin. Let me just caution you for a minute on, on, on pointing us to a percentage. Uh, we have two layers of calculation here, and if hopefully your math's good if you pass that, because that's then what this needs to come out to, and I'm not sure it will. Uh, I, I, I liked your other approach, <laughs> if you're going to have an approach. So uh, we have a motion, and we have a second, and then, and then Councilman Sill will get to discussion. Second. All right, discussion open to Councilman Sill. The original was 618,250. Right. So it's not half, it's just reducing by 300,000. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 What does that do? I mean, just, how many changes does that mean to everything? It's not the total start from scratch kind of thing. It, it, can, be, it can be adjusted if, if that's the, the will of the council. Do you recommend that adjustment? Well, no, I really probably don't. Um, and, you know, I'm not an engineer, but the, the schedule that was followed here was based on the expected needs going forward, some of which have been specifically identified, some of which have not in, in the schedule. Um, so I would hesitate from, without having more information on your end, to make a sort of broad sweeping amendment to um, what the utility has it has been determined that that the utility needs going forward. I didn't determine what that need is, uh, so I can't necessarily specify all the components of it. But uh, I would just be cautious about making a broad sweeping adjustment without um, knowing more about what makes that up. And again, as I mentioned earlier, what we're looking at here is funds that will be available for capital expenditure. That would be replacements as well as uh, additions to utilities assets. So in look at the comparative rate study on the last page. I mean, if we look 
with the, the test user, the 5 inch meter, 3,000 gallon usage, which from our discussion with Brian, that's over half of our city residents are lower than that. So they're, that's what they're going to be paying is 1275. We're still 50% lower than the nearest community, Sellersburg, and we're 50% cheaper than that. I mean, we're not talking about being anything close to driving you know, I mean, up to the top end of the, the water rates. And you don't have this one in the packet, but the, the Patriot water cost, I mean, yeah. what was that, $3.48 or something? I, actually, it's going up to 5 something. And so who else can our county water suppliers buy from? Unless they go drill their own wells, um, they're going to be paying three forty eight. They don't buy from us. We're going to be paying. Well, they're only going to be paying 286 mostly. Yeah, 286 for us or 348 from the, the other option. Do we have any other options? Well? Currently, no, except for maybe DuPont. And they can buy from Kent? With some infrastructure improvements. In real terms, and, and I know this is a ballpark, I know this isn't a dollar, a specific dollar figure, but in real terms, how much difference per thousand gallons would this amendment make to the typical homeowner and for that matter to the county? It would uh, be as, as proposed now, but prior to this amendment, it was $2.86 for a thousand gallons. Um, I believe this would bring it down to about $2.42 for a thousand gallons. And I, I would, caution everybody with, with using this comparative study so much because this draws in a lot of other rates from communities that don't have access to water as easily and cheaply as we do. We don't really have any kind of treatment plans. So to answer Jim's question, it really wouldn't affect most of the city's residents at all because none of them use that amount of water. It would only benefit our large wood of water users, correct? No, it would, it would allow the rate to be reduced across the board. The impact would be pretty small on on the uh, average residential use. But it would it would still reduce it by some. Yes. yes. Our average residential user is billed for how many thousand a month? Three thousand. Three thousand. So we're talking about a dollar twenty. Maybe less. Ballpark. And, you know, in council, what we're really trying to overcome here, right, is the lack of money to make an investment. And now we have the opportunity to put this ship um, on a right direction. I'd recommend against uh, reducing our capital replacement reserves. And also keep in mind, council, we have a $25 million system. And Kevin mentioned this earlier that one of the things we didn't do there are two other things in the state statute that allows us to do. First, I want to remind everybody, too, that our water, our sewer, they're not supported by property taxes. The users on the system have to bear the burden of maintaining it physically and also fiscally. And we know we've not done a good enough job because, again, we had to deal with sewer problems for the last eight years. Now we got to deal with water issues that, that weren't, a, weren't able to be dealt with previously. But the two things that Kevin mentioned that also is allowed by the state, because this is really one of the very few things where we have an opportunity to run this like a business, although we, we generally choose not to, but we said we would. We said we'd be the business-minded administration and, and be pragmatic about things and deal with our issues and use the data to drive, use data to drive our decision making. If we depreciated our, our $25 million in, in infrastructure over 30 years, we'd need over $800,000 a year set aside to replace that. We're only asking for about two thirds of that because we know we have a cap, we have, well we did the PER and it's 900 pages and I think Rob is gonna talk about the scope of the work and maybe phases two and phases three, we already know there's other work behind this that has to be done. And, you know, I believe that we've been very fair in these rates, particularly so 
with county water resellers. County water resellers, even after these rates are approved, are still buying their water at a 32% discount to what a city of Madison resident pays. Now there's a reason behind that because we went to a cost-based analysis. We looked to see what does it cost us to produce a thousand gallons of water. So it makes sense that it costs more if you live in the city because there's more to maintain. There's more calls. But there's also basic infrastructure. Uh, the, the argument about, well, mass and water can do all these things separately, take that away because we just want you to be able to isolate what benefits the county. We, we can't do that because some of these things cross over. There's basic fixed cost, fixed infrastructure, whether you sell uh, a, a, a gallon of water or in our instances, almost 700 million gallons of water. Well, this proposal doesn't, doesn't strictly benefit the county water resellers. It, it, it would reduce the rates for everybody who but, purchases but, water from the But county. as Brian said, 40% of our water is going to the county water resellers. And we've been really fair about, about this approach. Now, I as I talk to each of the uh, uh, members and presidents of these presidents of these water boards, officers of the water boards. I think it's entirely appropriate that they do their own cost benefit analysis. But here is a universal truth in meeting with all of them, councilmen, and that is they've not invested in their water infrastructure, they've not in, increased their rates, and we're all in the same boat together. And so now this is an opportunity for us all to correct it. Our water is, 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 way, is way, way affordable and way less expensive than any community of our size. And I'll ask you this question. How much, how much do you think is a fair price for the county water resellers to pay for 1,000 gallons? The cost of whatever it is that okay. you have to put into it, which, so which, is, which, is, which is what yeah. this accounts for. Yeah. However, it also accounts for a reduction in the capital improvement reserve which would benefit everybody who purchased But council, I just ask you, don't you see the irony in this? Let's cut, let's cut our future investments because we want to reduce the current cost and then we might have to come back later and borrow. Uh, and that's really all I have to say on that, but which is these rates are very fair. Uh, I, you know, I, I, it sounds like based on the letter that the councilman Chatham wrote, uh, representatives well, from the- Point of order, I didn't write it. I read oh, I'm sorry, read, sir, excuse thank me. You. Thank you, sorry about that. Red, uh, one of the representatives from them will be here at the, at the public hearing, which will be in two weeks. And the only other thing, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, which, what we have in front of us is an ordinance. And the ordinance has these lists of, of rates and what those dollar amounts are. <coughs> It's, it's one thing to amend the rate study, which obviously affects this, but it's also difficult, too, for the council members to know exactly what those numbers are in dollars, which is what's in the ordinance. That, do you see what I'm getting at a little bit? Because it's, it's changing, it may not only change the first number up here, but this will change the rate on all those down the, down the line, and the same going forward. Well, yeah, it, 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 it absolutely will change the numbers, and the, it, the motion was made to reflect that based on the calculations that have to be done. So I think we've got a motion in a second. Council, I would uh, for ask the, Council not to uh, concur with the motion on the table. And then I would infer for that I would say that between now and the public hearing, if Councilman Tevinall wants to put a motion in, or I'm sorry, put an amendment in writing and circulate it, we can also reevaluate it when it's in writing uh, and more clarity uh, at, the, at the next meeting. Well, the next meeting will be third reading, so I don't know. Oh, we have a public hearing. Uh, well, that, that's not when we have anything on the table, is that right? Um, Unless you have it unanimous consent. Can be, it amendments. can be amended by unanimous consent okay. of the council. So, um, is there any other comments from the council? I would just like to reiterate what we've kind of learned through this whole process, the educational process, is that in the state of Indiana, there is a state law that says that a water company cannot make money, like it cannot be, you know, a cash cow for us. We have to account.
account for every penny, and we have to make sure that we break even, and we have to account for every dime spent. So this is not about us making money. This is about us breaking even. When we went to apply for our loan to be able to do the infrastructure stuff that we needed, we wouldn't even qualify because they told us that our rates were so low that we could not prove how we would ever be able to pay the loan back. And so in order for us to even qualify to borrow the money, we had to raise our rates enough to prove that we could pay back the money that we're borrowing. And so you know, I just want to make sure that people understand this is not about us trying to raise funds for the city or make money. We're trying to fix what's broken and maintain it for the future. To say that my motion here is, is reducing, is, is somehow inappropriate or, or, or shackling us in, in the future from making these sorts of improvements. We're still making massive improvements in our city water infrastructure, which are needed. This does nothing to cut anything out of, out of the bond that, that we're going to pass or any of those projects in there. It's simply a way to say, whoa, hold on, we've got a lot of money going in here. Let's cut back on what these rates need to be at the moment. And then in five years, when that council decides to, to look at these rates again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and we increase the rates to, to make up the difference for the capital reserve uh, fund. Uh, council in five years could also reduce the rates. Could. Yeah. If it turns out we've overfunded our replacement reserve, and let's, uh, let's reduce rates. I don't believe I've ever seen a government reduce rates. But well, you know, in this hard. instance, let me just give one other point thing. In the last 14 years, we had about 35% cumulative inflation. That's er eroded our rates from 2008 when we last approved the rates. We're on path now for that same impact in four years. There's still uncertainty in these rates. The uncertainty is extended in inflationary environment. What's the economy going to look like? What's the geopolitical or political uh, aspects that's going to be on our government? All we know is what we know, which is in, in the water rate study that took a long time to prepare with lots of data, uh, we came up with recommendations that we believe are, are would, would create a solvent approach, more solvent approach to operating our water utility. And, there, and, there, there, was, and there was just a lot of effort that's went into this, and I, I, I again, I, uh, if the county water resellers aren't here tonight to uh, make any specific recommendations, but what we're recommending and proposing uh, through the water rate study that Trimmer Barbara Mulligan has spent a tremendous amount of time reviewing and discussing with us, that's translating now to an ordinance, is fair. Mr. Mayor, one more comment. Look, yes, sir. Looking at another factor than that from calculation, we're looking at servicing the debt with $950,000 a year based on the rate study, and that it just it takes away the, the capital reserve on the village. For some quick math, divide that out by the 676 million gallon we produce each year, we should be increasing rates on a per gallon basis by $1.40, just for the debt servicing. We're increasing their rates by $1.95, right? Or no, by $1.39. $1.39. So that's what we Just also mention, I've been doing this for quite a while now, as the gray probably suggests. Um, and one thing that we like to caution clients about is to a results-based approach. In other words, if your sensitivity is to the amount of the increase, then in all likelihood, the validity of the study becomes a little compromised. Uh, you develop what those needs are um, independent of how the impact might result with rates. Um, if it's a backwards approach, then you sort of are forcing numbers. And I understand your, your concern uh, about rate impact. Uh, but frankly, it's not a huge rate impact when you look at it from a dollar and cent perspective, nor is
is it a huge impact when you look at it on a per customer basis for any of the resellers? Anything from the public on the amendment? Okay. Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote on the amendment. Fatello? Michael? Dan Fatello? No. Jim Bartlett? No. Curtis Chatham? Yes. Josh Schaefer? No. Lucy Fatello? No. Carly Krebs? No. And Patrick Kenna? Yeah. Okay, so the amendment fails. And is there anything else on the ordinance as presented? Uh, you can go back to legal questions. I have uh, two, two other things real quick on that. Do we need a, and I don't know if this has been done in the past, do we, do we need a separate resolution? just to help clarify the transfer of those funds into the city? Um, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, so permitted by state statute. It's permitted by the statute, okay. yeah. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> uh, talk too much to uh, uh, hey, Patrick, on the pilot, I, I, I will be setting up a separate fund because I have to set money aside for the pilot, so I mean, you can see when it's transferred every year. Well, yeah, I was just thinking in okay. terms of, of accounting for it coming into the city just to make sure things were good. But okay. I'm, I'm glad you said the word fund. That jogged my memory. Um, should we establish a separate fund under the water department for the capital improvement reserve? Yes. As we did with the sewers? Exactly. Yes, we will do that. That's why I was going to set up. Okay. I, I've you'll, got you'll, you'll written down and I'll do that with the treasurer's office. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Will, uh, will, will you be bringing that to council, or will that just be established separately for the treasurer? The sewer capital improvement was established by ordinance. So I, uh, I think with this, this is the ordinance that will do that. Yeah, this, this, doesn't, this I don't think this establishment is separate. Uh, so. I'll have to check. I'll have to deal with my legal, my yeah. legal counsel. On yeah, that. I don't think that it does. So we may have to do that. Yeah, <coughs> you might be right on that. Because you're right, we did do that for the. I think it's actually a separate. separate. It's a resolution, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's an ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Water, water, water. Okay. situation. Okay. So that will move on to third reading. Thank you, Council. Uh, moving on, any miscellaneous business? Hearing none. Anybody here uh, would, under the public comment section, I'd like to address the Mayor's Office of Council. Please come to the podium, uh, name and address, and uh, uh, your statement to uh, Council, please. If anybody's here. Mr. Richards. How you doing? <coughs> How you doing tonight, sir? Doing all right. Thank you. <coughs> well, again, I'd just like to say, I. Thank you all for your efforts. Most of the job. Mr. Riggs, for the record, maybe just introduce yourself and name and address. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. This won't take long, maybe about three minutes. My name is Charles Ricketts. My wife, Mary Pat, and I live at 707 West First Street. On behalf of some of the residents in the vicinity of First and Mill Street intersection, we would like to take this opportunity to thank the city, the mayor, the tree board, Kathy Roping, and especially our neighbor, uh, Sally Works, whose generosity greatly helped to make the purchase and planting of 21 evergreens become a reality. These trees will not only be enjoyed today, but also by future generations. Some wise person whose name escapes me said the two best times to plant a tree is 40 years ago and today. So your current and future neighbors, thank you for your actions today. Mr. Riggins, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And on that note, 
Uh, we are celebrating Arbor Day, and uh, please come to the Broadway Fountain Saturday morning during Farmer's Market, uh, where they're at, they will have their annual Arbor Day celebration, and yours truly will be reading a, an Arbor Day proclamation. Uh, there'll be free treats there for anybody in the public to enjoy and ask, uh, ask them to plan. So, Mr. Ricketts, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Where's that at, Bob? Farmer's Market, Saturday. Saturday, around the Broadway Fountain. Tree Board uh, will be there celebrating Arbor, Arbor Day. I'd like to concur with Mr. Ricketts' statement. I drove by to see the trees. They look great. So thank you to everybody who worked to get those in there. Those will really be very efficient. Yeah, will be. Thank you. <coughs> hey, what else? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is David Ferguson. I wanted to introduce myself. I'll be the one that, uh, on the rural water that you'll be contacting if you want to get with us. So I just kind of want to put a name and a face together here so you could uh, introduce myself. So i uh, be glad to sit down and answer any questions you guys have and uh, go through that. I wasn't prepared to really do anything because we haven't had the information to really and get feedback from our study. Uh, so I didn't want to comment until we had exact information, but would be glad to sit down with any of you and discuss further. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ferguson. Appreciate it. Anyone else? I have a couple questions. One for, I guess, you and maybe one for Mindy. The uh, car charging station at the parking lot on Main Street, who takes care of the electric from that? Is it a paper use or is it free? Um, I asked Cindy to, or Mindy to address that. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's my understanding, and Gina, we do that right. So right now, when it was originally installed, it was to the city. Um, the gentleman who installed it has reached out to put more in other places, and I have requested that they have credit card machines attached to them, and that we install them on those as well. So that's my intention, is to any, any that go in new or upgrade those. Credit card use. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the uh, this one's for you for sure, Mindy. The liquid road product and the striping on Main Street. Is yeah. there any warranty or anything with that since it is There's worn warranty. extremely thin in numerous areas? There was a warranty. Um, it was <coughs> that was a understand that was a subcontractor of the contractor that we gave the bid to. So their warranty I think was 90 or 60 days, which is not enough. Um, we met two weeks ago with the contractor, which is who our contractor is with, and uh, walked the street with them and uh, expressed our displeasure. Uh, there's some inconsistencies in the wear as well, so um, hard for them to argue that uh, that's just the way it is because it's not wearing consistently. Um, so they came down again last week with their subcontractor. We walked it again with them. Um, Kenny, where we ended up was, uh, we, we are looking at this as a public safety issue. Um, first of all, it's not right. It should last a lot longer than that. Um, but it's a public safety issue, especially driving west at night in the rain. It's very dangerous in my opinion. Crosswalks, certain crosswalks are wearing off. Um, so we approached it to them as a public safety issue and it's not acceptable to us. Um, we met, I think it was on Friday, and ended that discussion with Kenny and I are going to go through, because not 100% of it needs to be repainted, but um, Kenny and I are going to go through the Main Street map. We're going to identify the areas that absolutely need to be repainted. We're going to, um, they're going to use a different kind of paint. I think there was maybe an issue with the kind of paint that they used, um, which is not something you would know when you're applying it. So uh, we're going to give that back to them. They're going to go through it. And uh, the words of Dave and their contracting was that they will make it right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have you guys looked into embedding reflectors at least down the side? Yes. Line? We've ordered reflectors, especially for the area where we changed the lane, uh, the driving lanes. Yes. Council, anything else? Along me, I appreciate everybody's attention and feedback. Um, 
get out and celebrate with uh, some of our festivals. May is a very, very robust festival, festival month. So as we head into Memorial Day weekend, we'll see more and more activity across, uh, across the community. Appreciate everybody. And uh, we'll have a motion to adjourn. You want to do that? So moved. Second. <coughs> All favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Yes, you are. 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 Y